Hi, everybody. <laughs> well, it's another exciting edition of the Brian and Vinny show here. Yeah, Vinny's got the uh, the gut cam. Yes. I've got the legs cam going on right here. Yeah. Jared was was uh, switching from me to you back and forth. And uh, then everyone was complaining about it. They just want to see the two of us like this. So I think we're just going to leave it here the whole time. Well, that's weird. Yeah, they didn't like the, the camera cuts. And yes, I'm not going to be looking at Vinny because for perspective reasons, he's behind me. So yeah. in order to look at him, I'd have to go, is that right, Vinny? Yes. Like, I, I is am the, that so? I am the monitor. You are insert WWE superstar here. Normally, I look over here because uh, the first time that we did a video show, I started looking at the people. and They were all creeped out. Like, oh, this guy's looking at me. It's called whale watching, but we can't guarantee you'll actually see a whale. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? So it's whale seeking. <laughs> Whale hoping. I may not Whale see witching. it, but I'm going to be watching it. No doll. After all that, she can't bring a fucking doll to the ring. Maybe the king of Saudi Arabia was like, bro, we can't have dolls. Was the doll's arms or legs exposed? What a fucking waste. You know how much you're paying Ronda Rousey to ever do matches with one arm tied behind her back? Probably a lot. A lot. Yeah. Probably went, like, felt like he was going way too high and thought, fuck, I just need to tuck my head. Just like people do when they screw up the styles clash. It's like they, they, they're they going towards their head, and they instinctually tuck, even though they're not supposed to. I think that's what he did. This was severe spinal compression. He's four inches shorter than he used to be. This is how you get paralyzed and break your neck and end up in a wheelchair or dead. Yeah, this He is... kept working. He did the whole match after. He's taking a superplex a minute later. Yeah. <laughs> they said he was fine. Bro, I don't know if he's fine. This looked like a fucking neck breaker. If he's fine, he'll never die. Well. He's indestructible. When he got dropped on his fucking shoulder 15 times, we said, that can't be good for your shoulder. Turns out it wasn't good for his shoulder. So he's going to be out several months with shoulder surgery. This is the second time in 2022 that Brock Lesnar has won the WWE Championship. Keith Lee debuted with a mighty beal out of the corner where he threw a man 50 feet in the air. As powerhouse Hobbs grabs Dante Martin and attempted to throw him 51 feet in the air. Trent tries the acai moonsault to the floor. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'll be home uh, next Monday. We fly home Sunday. So, oh, wow. Uh, we're staying a little longer once we get rid of you chaps. No offense. My wife arranged it. What have we done since the last time we were here? <laughs> Vinny got lot. sunburned. I summered badly. I think you can see it definitely here. It's a, this is a sign from God, by the way, that uh, you are in middle age because the parts where, on my face where I'm sunburned are the parts where I used to have hair but don't anymore. Bridget and Rodney and I stayed on the sh All right. It looks like we're back up. I don't know what the hell happened there. Huh? I think that screen's frozen. Is that yeah. a problem? I don't know. All right. Oh, I have to redo the video? All right. Hold on. Anything else? God help me. Just one thing after another. There we go. That's All better? Right. Well, no, it's not better. Of course, it's not going to work. Vinny, talk about something while I fix this. And then suddenly everyone starts to scream. And when they're screaming, there's a big, massive whale is breaching. Uh, probably about 500 yards off. We saw sea turtles. We saw seals. And uh, one or two chickens, I think. Yeah, I just hit the mic with my hat. This kid never naps. She, she is like Dave. Sleep is the enemy. And she fell asleep of all places on a fucking speedboat. Then she woke up. Fucking barfed everywhere over the side. It's absolutely disgusting. And I bounce on this fucking wooden thing all the way there and all the way back. My ass is flat right now. Like, it's literally a flat ass. You think you had a flat ass, Vinny? I do. I do. I'll show you a fucking flat ass if you want to see it. No. Do we have to talk about this show? No. Maybe Tony Khan would actually take this as a compliment because he was a huge ECW fan. Yeah, but yeah. it did feel like one of those angles that Paul Heyman used to book where it was like, you know, this guy comes out, then this guy comes out, then this guy beats up this guy, then this guy comes out, then this guy... And by the end, you're like, holy shit, that was a lot of fucking shit that just happened right there. It all made sense. It was maybe a little bit too much. MJF comes out for a promo. Or should I say, Max. Because this is a completely different character than the Maxwell Jacob Friedman we have seen. He's every fan, every stand-up for WWE fan that was so angry... That CM Punk, how dare you walk out of WWE? How dare you not entertain me? Maxwell Jacob Friedman is a character. 
He has weaknesses. He has flaws. He has strengths. He has victories. He has triumphs. He has emotions. We can relate to him. We understand what he's going through. He's not a cardboard character gimmick. He's not a gangster. He's not a creep from the creep farm. He's a human being. It was awesome. Do I dare compare it to the pipe bomb promo? Yes. This is your classic villain origin story, okay? Yeah. Every villain had something that hurt him, which caused him to yeah. be such a horrible person. This is a, in the parlance of our times, I believe that online they would say this is when Max became the Joker. Is uh, when his teammates threw quarters at him. Instead of being a character who has had horrible things happen to him, and now he is going to try to remedy these things by doing good, he is misguided, and he is going to do horrible things to people. The lights go out, and then Buddy Matthews is in the ring. He looks like a zillion dollars. He is here. This feud is in part about pro wrestling versus sports entertainment. You're not supposed to cheer the sports entertainer. Chris Jericho is supposed to be the sports entertainer. So he, he cut a very WWE promo, a very good version of a WWE promo. He even said, this is going to be sports entertainment, but it's going to be entertaining, which it was. Obviously, in the end, Eddie Kingston beats Chris Jericho. I mean, that's clearly how this is being designed. But uh, I I think that this has legs. Legs to go more than just one match. Go to the pay-per-view. Eddie beats him and we move on. I think you got something here. And I, I absolutely would not rush this feud. And she notes the only question is, who's next? Which gets exactly the chant you would think they would, uh, you think it would get. And then she says, the better question is, who's left? Well, you know, left? Goldberg's deal's up. So I, I suppose you could bring him in if they it decided is- they wanted to do some... Uh, what a match yeah, that would be. Gender. Goldberg, Goldberg versus, versus Jade. Jade Cargill for the women's TBS title. Yes. This match ruled. This grappling battle ruled. The strike exchanges ruled. The pro wrestling storytelling ruled. It was so great. But again, they go to commercial three minutes in, and the commercial break is three more minutes. So this match was like ten and a half minutes, and we saw about seven of it. I want to see more. <laughs> You could cut Ricky Starks off the show entirely. Give that time to Brian Danielson. You could cut that whole Hardy Family Office stairway promo. Give that time to Brian Danielson. The more Brian Danielson you give me, the happier I'm going to be. They spent the whole show, both of them, promising me rampant violence. You know how many violent matches I've seen in my lifetime? Lots. And uh, on the scale of violent matches, this would have been in the lower tier. It was good. It was great technical wrestling. Daniel Bryan is great. But, like, I wanted fucking violence. We got TakeOver, Stand and Deliver coming up WrestleMania weekend. Dude, they're running that show in a building. I don't know what building, but, like, it's not a small building. It's not like, a... They're going to try to put five to 7,000 fans in a building for NXT 2.0. Cora takes her sunglasses off and says, it's time to train. And Raquel takes her sunglasses off and says, where are we? And Cora puts her sunglasses on and says, we're at a park. And Raquel puts her sunglasses on and sees a sign. And she reads the sign that says, Tree Trek Adventure Park. And Cora takes her sunglasses off and says, yes, Tree Trek Adventure Park. And Raquel takes her sunglasses off. Every time they spoke, they were adjusting <laughs> or replacing or removing their sunglasses uh, every single time. It's like two David Caruso's cutting a never-ending promo. These people that put together these women's matches want them to do spots that only women would do. And my number one pet peeve is to fall onto someone in the splits. It's a dumb-looking move, and that's her finisher. She falls on them in the splits. And there is Dexter Loomis. And his face is always blank, right? He doesn't, he doesn't talk, and his face never changes. So he just does this. They're facing Ivy Nile and Paxton Tately. Excuse just- me, who? I wrote down uh, Paxton Tately. Tatum Paxley. I see. Pax Tate Tonley's wrestling is totally fine. Uh, Tatum Paxley. So uh, they pinned Paxley Tatum with the neckbreaker 450. Tatum combo. Paxley. Dolph Ziggler and Tommaso Ciampa fucking ruled. This match was so good that I would go as far as to give the whole show a thumbs up, which is like impossible <laughs> after reviewing it. But that's how good this match was. You got to were... go out of your way to watch this match. This is like the old days of when we used to waste our time voting. There were many, many times where we would say the best match was on NXT, but the best show was AEW. It's the same thing. This match was awesome. I actually would agree with that. This Ziggler-Champa match was better than anything on AEW. 